Well, we should do exactly that and see what it looks like. That's exactly what I was thinking. Let's do it. And to recreate their very own moonwalk, they're back at the Alameda Naval Base and Building 24. Here in Command Central, we're going to take as our jumping off point in testing this myth, NASA's actual footage of the moon landing. Um, we're going to try and replicate several of the gestures we see the astronauts doing on the moon. And the three we've narrowed it down to are jumping straight up into the air. Come on out here and give me a salute. Big Navy salute. Off the ground, the floor. Skipping, which is a kind of a two-leg hop. Notice he puts both feet on the ground at the same time with each jump. And it looks like it's a really efficient way to move around. The third is just a straight leg over leg run. We're going to match the camera angle and match the techniques supposedly used to fake it and see what we get. With those three actions and camera angles in mind, we can begin phase one of the test. As point of comparison, Adam will simply recreate the myth. In full costume, he'll run, jump, and skip as if he's bounding around on the moon, and then we'll slow down the tape and take a look. This is called the Snoopy Cap. It's the Mythbuster motto. If it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. Let me take you on a little tour of what I'm wearing. This is, in fact, a wedding present from my crew a few years ago. But when I got it, it was lovely, but not quite accurate enough. So I redid the gloves. I added my label. I did a wrist checklist. I did the correct watch. I added all the hardware attachments, all the labeling on the front pack and the backpack. I decided to make myself the mission captain with the red stripes. And this is the first time I've ever gotten to wear it all at once. I've got a lot of tools and gadgets and stuff. Adam has spacesuits. By the way, I should point out, this is not a real spacesuit. It's just my wear around town spacesuit. Come on out here and give me a salute. Some of the first words spoken from the moon's surface answered the simple but powerful question. It's almost like a powder. What did it feel like? I can see the footprint of my uh, boot and the fine sandy particles. But did Buzz Aldrin really make such an impression on the moon? To find out if moon boots make boot prints, Tori's borrowed the real deal. Look what I got, a real moon boot. Wow. Uh, isn't that cool? That looks just like Adam's. Yeah. So this is an, the actual article. Yep. Now all we have to do is put it on the moon stomper. Smash it into some dust and see if it leaves a footprint. This conspiracy theory is pretty interesting. They say that because there's a vacuum on the moon and there's no water vapor... Does that fit? You feel your toe there? You can't leave a clear imprint from your boots the way they did in the photos from the lunar landing. Just 840 pounds of lunar material returned to Earth from all of the Apollo missions. There's not much of it to go around. So for this test, NASA has given us a lunar regolith simulant. It's manufactured to test equipment that is going to the moon. It's very similar to lunar dust in the fact that each particle is very sharp. Dirt on Earth it has been weathered, so it's very smooth. So this is as close to lunar dust as we can get. That's likely to be the key to this myth, a comparison of the physical properties of sand and lunar regolith. Down here, a footprint in dry sand collapses because the weathered particles can't bind together without water. But up on the moon, other bonding agents are at work, one of which the irregular and jagged shapes of lunar dust could cause it to stick together in those famous boot prints. Will the irregular shape of lunar regolith in conjunction with the vacuum result in a clean boot print and bust the myth? <laughs> Give it a shot. All right. The rig is ready to take its one-legged step, and the vacuum chamber has been uh, vacuumed. Boot stop, vacuum. Here we go. In three, two, one. Yeah! <laughs> Take that! Yeah! It works! In your face, conspiracy theorist! Yep, it really does work. Moon landing one, conspiracy theorist zero. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So it seems you can make a clean, stable footprint in a vacuum. Look at that. We made a footprint inside of a vacuum. And there was no water vapor, which is what this conspiracy theory is all about. Well, the gravity is six times stronger on Earth than it is on the moon. So if we made a footprint here, we're definitely making one on the moon. So I guess this conspiracy theory is busted. Busted. 
busted. Now NASA will let us out of here. Coming up, Adam chafes for science. Making me quite sore in some very private places. Then Cary Grant and Tory wrap up the flag flapping mystery. Please, don't try anything you're about to see us do at home, ever. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. John F. Kennedy started the race to the moon in a speech he gave in 1961, famously challenging the nation's finest minds to shoot for another world. Less than a decade later, they succeeded, and eventually 12 astronauts left their mark on the moon's surface. Or did they? To find out, Adam and Jamie are testing a myth that to fake the footage, NASA filmed it in a studio and then slowed it down. Now I've seen the movement. I'm going to try and practice jump here. And to test that claim, Adam and Jamie will do exactly the same by recording at 48 frames per second and playing back the tape at the regular 24, you get beautifully smooth slow motion. All right, do the run. With this effect, Adam's movements do have a certain weightless quality. But to be sure if it's the technique NASA used, we have to simulate one-sixth gravity, repeat the three actions, and then compare the footage. Now it's time to break out the gravity rig. And this was put together for us, purpose-built by Trapeze World. The gravity rig is designed to give me total freedom of motion while making me weigh exactly what an astronaut on the moon would weigh. That is one-sixth of what that fully loaded astronaut would have weighed on Earth. Well, the other thing left is to put on the suit and really try this. Now, I know before you write to complain that this suit's a replica, that it's not pressurized, that I'm not doing this in a vacuum or with real moon dust around, I know. What we are trying to look at here is purely about the movement and gesture of the astronauts. We know that Neil Armstrong, in all of his gear, weighed about 350, 360 pounds, which means if I'm going to be correctly weighted for our moon, I'm going to need to weigh just about 60 pounds. Ha, ah, 62. That's close enough for me, man. Let's do it. So under lunar-like gravitational conditions, Adam gets to repeat his moonwalk exercises. But the difference between Adam and Armstrong is NASA's rigorous training regime. It's a thing to wear a rig like this. It takes a lot of stamina. It's also making me quite sore in some very private places. It's a lot easier in this rig to match what, the kind of movements we see the astronauts make in the NASA footage. I mean, it really kind of lends itself to the weird center of gravity that happens when you weigh less, how much little movements make a big difference in, in how you go. I feel like this is looking really close to what NASA shows on the moon. Adam's right. On first viewing, it does appear to be a closer match. But at Mission Control, the evidence is far from clear cut. If you take a close look at the slow motion skip, Adam's efforts to get the correct height and distance means his helmet is jerking around in a distinctly Earth-like fashion. But it's equally clear the gravity rig doesn't quite work either. Adam's weight might be technically correct, but he lacks that smooth, low-gravity look. Check it out. Oh, actually, you know what? Can we review this in the blooper room? I gotta get out of this rig. I'm exhausted. Okay. Big baby. Back at HQ, the guys settled in to review the footage in detail. The lower right is much better, but it's not even close. But just like Sir Mick, they still can't get no satisfaction. Well, the slowed down frame rate doesn't match the NASA footage. No. The gravity rig, it's better, but I'd still have to say it doesn't nail it. Yeah, neither of them are there. I wish that we could somehow get ourselves into a moon's gravity environment. Then I'd feel comfortable calling this one. That can be arranged. Really? Yeah, there's a company called Zero G, which offers the only FAA approved weightless experience, and uh, they do moon gravity as well. That is fantastic. Let's suit up and get out there. Okay. It's iconic footage replayed countless times across the globe. American astronauts planting the stars and stripes on man's newly conquered neighbor. It's gotta be one of the most proud moments of my life, I guarantee you. To find out if it really was a PR stunt, 
Carrie, Grant, and Tori have breached NASA's inner sanctum. Now, the conspiracy theorists think that they see some sort of breeze blowing around the flag, which you wouldn't have on the moon since there's no atmosphere. So I've built a replica of the lunar flag assembly. We're going to put it in a vacuum chamber, pump out all the air, and see if we can move it around just like the astronauts would have done placing it on the moon, see if we see that back and forth motion. <laughs> 